This past weekend, Major League Soccer's Next Pro, a third division pro soccer league here in North America, completed the regular league season. MLS Next Pro teams are connected to first division teams, and they're another step in the pro player development pathway. Hello, everyone. This is Rev Brad, and you're listening to the Soccer Chaplains United podcast from the Touchline. Today, I'm joined again by a couple of special guests, Jubal McDaniel, He's the volunteer chaplain to the Tacoma Defiance, and Kevin Hasnick, volunteer chaplain to Colorado Rapids too. Each of these guys serves as part of Soccer Chaplains United, and they've been serving their MLS Next Pro teams all throughout this season, and both of them are in the playoffs. Today on the podcast, we're going to take a look back at the 2023 season and look ahead at the upcoming playoff push and see where these guys think their teams are going to land. The whole time promises to have a little bit of fun banter, some predictions, and also some prayers for their respective teams. So stay tuned. We kick things off right after this. He's found the space, and he's found the back of the net. Just a little off foot, thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him in, and they have. He has the hat trick. The second in his career. The third the hat trick hero talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure to the corner goes towards the near post and you're the angle of what a goal what a goal welcome to the from the touchline podcast i have two special guests uh, today mls next pro chaplains kevin hasnack jubal mcdaniel guys welcome back it's been a few months since you guys were last on the podcast and there's plenty of things to talk about uh on today's podcast but welcome and uh jubal I, i'm still trying to understand why you've got the sounders as your backdrop i, th I think this is overreaching here a little bit buddy oh is it is it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it wasn't even intentional it just came up uh as a standard thing on zoom, but half the time I can't even get the backgrounds to work anyway. So, you know, it's, it, we're all one club, man. That's how it goes. I, actually, that's actually a phrase we use here in Colorado, one club. So uh, do they use that in Seattle? Uh, they don't, they don't. Uh, but you do find uh, even the defined guys wearing Sounders warmups and things like that. Um, and it's, it's very much, uh that that type of attitude um i haven't heard that phrase used but it is it is very cohesive okay well if you guys start using it uh colorado here we'll we'll call you on copyright stuff and all, all sorts of previous usage but uh yeah kevin hasnack is also on the podcast kevin is chaplain for rapids too and um guys we're going to get into a little bit here with how successful both of your teams are, but Kevin, welcome. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Brad. Um, Jubal, we meet again. <laughs> we <do. laughs> yeah, for those of you that don't follow MLS Next Pro, MLS Next Pro is the third division soccer. These teams are tied into MLS clubs. And so there's a little bit of uh, player movement that goes on that we all know about. There's a little bit of banter that goes on, as we all know about. And Kevin and Jubal, both with Soccer Chaplains United. And guys, um, I mean, there's a couple other, quote unquote, two chaplains out there or two sports ministry folks out there. But you guys really are the, the primary guys that I know of that work with us. And uh, some of the others are just... Yeah, it's kind of unique how they're in there, but we're going to talk today a little bit about MLS Next Pro because your seasons just finished yesterday and we're going to be getting into the playoffs here this next week. So a little bit of some previewing, uh, I'll run down what we're going to do. Um, guys, we're going to go back and review a little bit of your seasons and see what, are, what were some highlights and lowlights for the year. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about there's some unique things that MLS Next Pro get to do. One of them is you get to select your opponent for the playoffs. And so we're going to we're going to talk through that a little bit and see who you guys would choose as chaplains. Maybe put on your coach hat for a second. Um, and then, yeah, we'll talk about a few other things around MLS next and 
next pro and and uh, mls and uh maybe even talk a little bit about fantasy football that we're all playing <laughs> we'll see oh no we'll see in but for to, a ride in for a uh, ride in for a ride and and just to be clear right uh jubal you are still an evertonian right you you haven't changed allegiances in in the premiership even though it looks like everton might be going down blue through and through man okay and kevin you're a typical bandwagner arsenal fan right oh sorry <laughs> sorry yeah well i i kind of like to live you know in the present not like you know a man you fan who lives in the past so yeah. at least we have a past oh boy oh boy here we go here and we i go. You know, I am not – some people think I'm a bandwagoner because of our past, but the truth is my mentor, friend of mine, was a Manchester United chaplain. So it was my first premiership game, and I and I saw Manchester United just totally disarm Watford. And so, yeah, that's was – that, Was that when it was in black and white? <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry now now okay we have to move on because we just we, we don't have enough time united's trophy room i mean sorry their trophy warehouse actually they have to <laughs> circulate the number of trophies that they've won but we won't talk about those things oh, just because arsenal what finished second last year for the first time in uh, forever. they they did but you know we, we we're not here to talk about Premier League. No, we're here to talk about MLS Next Pro. We we are, and so Jubal, I actually want to begin with you. Tacoma Defiance coming in second in the regular season standings in MLS Next Pro West Western Conference. Jubal, start us out. What were some of the highlights uh, for the season for you? as chaplain for the Tacoma Defiance, what, what are some of those things that you look back over the year and you go, these are things worthy of celebrating some, some great moments. What are those things for you? Yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of great moments really to be celebrated uh, throughout the season. You know, some of them great, some of them small, uh, some that, you know, people may not be aware of. I think a lot of, Individual performances uh, can easily be celebrated. I think the the attitude and culture uh, behind the club is something to be celebrated in that continued development. Um, you know, on, on the more public scale, you know, obviously the results, uh, winning the Pacific title again uh, for the second year in a row. So basically every year the, seat, the league has been in existence uh, is something to be celebrated. Uh, we had three guys uh, sign first team contracts mm. uh, this year, uh, which is which is quite extraordinary. Uh, being able to make their way up, uh, we have a number of academy guys that are making consistent minutes and consistent time with us, um, and are performing well, uh, continuing to prove themselves, and even more behind them. Uh, so all in all, I think there's just a lot of things to be celebrated. New staff this year that have really come together and uh, and, and brought a, a different edge to the team. Uh, we've been very, very difficult to beat at home, uh, even as we saw last night. And uh, yeah, it's just it's, there's a lot to lot to celebrate, a lot to be happy about. That's fantastic. And, um, you, you know, it's always an amazing thing I've noticed as a chaplain we we have a special privilege to be in the interior and jubal it's interesting you use the word you know the things that are public because i think as chaplains we would celebrate so many more things that seem small or insignificant to people but we know that they're really uh for an individual could be a huge accomplishment a huge thing to overcome and um you know just even for me so many years in doing that to see an athlete who comes back from an injury and has a a great year or or not even a great year but just makes that comeback from injury and gets those first minutes or that that first achievement right those are those are worthy things of celebrating that i think often get lost in the in the context so thank you for for uh hinting at some of those things and and saying some of those things kevin what about for you rapids too um 
Yeah. What's it, what's it been like? You guys took first in the, is it the frontier division? Yep. The frontier division. Um, <clears throat> also top of the West uh, clinched that a few weeks ago. And then last night we're able to uh, secure the number one overall league. So they were top of the league uh, in general with most points. So I think that for, at least for the Rapids too, there was, there's a lot to celebrate around just the success of, of this year, um, you know, scoring the most points. Uh, I think they led the league in the most goals, most assists. So offensively, just really doing well. But the big part, I think, was just their – I think they showed a lot of uh, grit. I mean, there was a lot of times where, you know, we're, we're getting nervous when they're we're going down a couple goals and then storming back. Um, like last night, I mean, they scored late um to to secure the overall seed um we've got the golden boot winner uh we've got i think three guys in the top uh the top of the league in scoring and in assists so there's a lot to celebrate there but like you said for me uh as far as chaplain i think there's so many things that were off the field that were so important uh and brad you mentioned some of those you know guys coming back from significant injuries that happened last year that got some big minutes. We saw a lot of guys who um, I think really came into their own this year. They, they were maybe Academy guys uh, that, that really got some, some minutes and be, developed as pros and uh, developed as men. And that was really fun to see. You know, guys um, being in the unique positions that we are, there are times when we see, maybe a difficulty and adversity. I, I said earlier, low light, maybe. Is there something, without getting into detail, but is there have has there been an adversity that your your team maybe has had to come through um, this year, this season, other than, you know, sometimes we go through the summer slump or, or we might have, <clears throat> you know, a, a bad stretch of games or, or just even something else. But I, I'm just curious if there's, something else from your perspective where you're like, you know, I really saw, you know, the team, some individuals take these kinds of things on and, and they overcame it. Is there anything like that for you guys that you, you look to that, I don't know, maybe becomes a building block for going into the playoffs. Cause you can look back and go, Hey, we faced this hurdle. We faced this challenge and we overcame it. And now we've got some tools and things to build on. Kev. Uh, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> We had a um, a technical a member of the technical staff that was in a pretty significant accident. Um, he was uh, training uh, for an Ironman and he was hit by a car, uh, and it it was it was scary. I think it was scary for everybody that's connected to the club. Uh, but it was one of those moments where we were able to kind of come around that family off the field, uh, and then really. It, it does something to kind of uh, draw us all together. Um, and it, it was a hard, it was a hard couple weeks, but I think the, the, the things coming out of that, it really, I, th I think drew a lot of people together um, and helped us understand that, you know, there, what, what is possible on the field um, is obvious. We, you know, the, the success of the season, the points, the, the goals, those are all big, but I think the things off the field sometimes, uh, are, are able to draw people together and and to show kind of the the cohesiveness of the group and the understanding that we are all together um, to build that culture uh, and and really come through that time really well and and to look forward with a, a, with a different purpose you know yeah thanks for sharing that Kevin yes yeah, sometimes those off the field things do they galvanize us as a group they they help us come together in a different way because we come come together around something that uh, goes even beyond football. Jubal, how, how about for you guys? Was there anything that, that you look back and you see within the club, the community, the culture, like some some rally point that uh, or an adversity that, that the team had to come through? Uh, yeah, I think I think for us there wasn't necessarily a, a traumatic event uh, like that, but uh, one of the things I do see is that uh, looking back to the start of the season, uh, we had, in, in in essence, a full roster rebuild. Uh, coming into the season, uh, there were very few guys that were actually on the roster, uh, very few that were 
uh, remain from last season. Um, and so the, the roster itself is, is quite new, um, almost in entirety. And, and looking at that, there, there's a common thread in that a lot of the guys that were signed were uh, former uh, participants in the Sounders Academy um, and then players that they brought up from the academy that were current. And I think, I think looking at that from a cultural perspective, they understand what the organization itself is about. Uh, they understand and believe in their own development process and system. Um, and so these guys have kind of gone out, got more experience, and then they've been brought back to contribute to the organization that they started with, uh, whether it was university or they were off playing in USL or maybe another MLS Next Pro team. And they've been brought back to contribute to the Sounders organization um, because they believe in it, they trust in it. Um, and so that's one of the common threads that I see that just unites everyone. Um, so now they're kind of being reunited together after, you know, years apart. And, and that's a that's a cohesive gel that this group has with one another. Yeah, that's a good point you make, Jubal. I, even as I was, uh, you know, reading through, looking through, I think our the GM for Rapids 2 had made this comment that there's always at this level a lot of moving pieces. And to find that that cohesiveness, the cords of unity that that kind of tie and bind bind a team together can be challenging because, you know, it, it, I don't know how it was for Defiance, but I know sometimes you've got guys coming down to get some rehab, some minutes. You've got guys coming up from the academy to maybe get a look, get an opportunity. And so there's a lot of moving parts and pieces at, at the MLS Next Pro level. And that can be quite a challenge to kind of manage all those different elements and and even to serve all those different elements as in our in our roles as as chaplain. So, um, yeah, it it kind of I don't know. Maybe I feel a little bit of proud papa, but to see Rapids two and Tacoma at the top of the table in their respective um, Western conferences is is, is kind of neat to see that in the standing. So so let's get into it a little bit. Let's get into the uniqueness here. So. What what is interesting to me is that um, for Rapids Rapids two, you guys had four losses. Tacoma, you guys had five losses, and each of you had a loss to the other, right? And playing against each other, I think uh, Jubal, you, your your boys took it here when they came to Denver, two to one, um, and uh, we the Rapids two. I say we, it's really Kevin, but uh, uh, there is a little bit of a uh, you know, we are one club. Um, but Juba, we we took a three one victory there in Tacoma. So guys, talk about those two games and and what did that look like for for the guys to travel and to take a a win on the road? Kev, let's start with you because uh, I think this was the first time Rapids two had actually won in Tacoma, right? Yeah. Um... You know, last year there was a there was a couple of teams that were um, problematic. You know, I, if you could use those words, but difficult to get by. Uh, and one of them, um, well, traditionally has always been Tacoma. So uh, I think that that was a uh, kind of a picture for the guys. There's a, a couple of clubs that they'd had trouble getting past Tacoma, uh, a Houston at Houston kind of thing. So those those games were important for them to kind of break through to know that they can, you know, go win on the road and beat some really difficult teams to break down. And so that was a big one. Um, I think Jubal, uh, he called it the cone of silence. He wouldn't talk to me that week, which was tough. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I continued to just, you know, pray for him and, and make sure that he was okay, but I, I didn't get anything, anything back at that time. So I don't know what was going on there, but it was fun. Uh, we even talked about uh, I don't travel on the road with the team, but, you know, of the of the games to try to get to and try to build toward uh, Tacoma is probably on the list. So that way that, you know, we can kind of see each other and see kind of what we do um, in our environment. So I think something to consider for the next year is I go maybe to Tacoma. He comes here to Colorado um, just to kind of see what what each other does, um, and that that will make that game a little bit more spicy, I think personally, <laughs> um, especially when 
the other chaplain is standing next to you, uh, win, lose, or draw, uh, I think that would be kind of a tough, a tough one or, or a good one. I don't know. It depends on how it goes. <laughs> Jubal, how about, how about for you? Did, did Tacoma see Rapids too as a, you know, or did they bef- before this season as an opponent to be feared? Yeah, I think I think just given the uh, the initial burst out of the gate uh, that Colorado had and and being undefeated, um, you know, that was something to uh, to kind of look at it and and be aware of. But at the same time, you know, our our motto is defiantly Tacoma. And we're just we're just there to wreck and mess things up, and uh, so that was kind of the attitude going into it. Was like, sure, there's a record, but we're here to mess it up, and um, so it was nice to be able to do that, um, and you know, continue especially to get that win on the road in Colorado, which is difficult given the travel and the elevation and things like that. Um, so, so that was nice, and then you know, I think in a sense we were ready for another a second battle when they came here. Um, and, and it truly was, um, it was a game to behold where, from my opinion, uh, we were very dominant in that match from the start and, uh, just got caught out a few times, but, but I mean, we, we peppered the goal all night, made it difficult for him to possess. Uh, we just made him chase a bit and, uh, yeah, it was an unlucky result, but it was, it was good. And I think if there's an opportunity to go again, uh, it'll, it'll be fun. My wife and I have already committed to going to Colorado if, if the Western Conference final is there and uh, being a part of that, supporting the team and uh, just celebrating the season together. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Kev, uh, it sounds like Jubal's giving a little bit more of a technical analysis of the game. So we might need to work on that aspect for you for uh, for next season. But uh no, uh, so so if you don't know MLS Next Pro, when the teams enter into the playoffs, there's a, a unique feature in that the teams get to pick their opponents. So Jubal, we're going to play a little bit of a game here. I want you to pick, so Tacoma, Rapids will get a bye here in the first round, but Tacoma get to pick their opponent. And uh, so the, the two and three seed get a pick. Tacoma can pick from... Austin FC two, St. Louis City two, Earthquakes two, or Houston Dynamo two. So Jubal, as a curiosity, who are you picking? If you are in the, you know, you're in the technical area, you're the coach, you're the GM, you get to pick the opponent uh, for Tacoma. Who are you picking for your first round playoff opponent? And and you guys uh, have the the home field advantage in this, so you know. Yes. I don't know. Do you pick a stronger opponent or a weaker one? But who are who are you picking? Uh, at this point, I'm probably picking the Dynamo. Um, San Jose. Uh, we played them recently. They gave us a good game. Uh, they had a late push uh, into playoffs, and so they're kind of mentally buzzing right now. Um, and so that's probably not an opponent you want to take on. Whereas Dynamo has been a little bit more comfortable. Uh, they tend to give us a pretty good game, uh, but consistently we've found good results over them. And then asking them to travel farther uh, and play in the rain and in this weather uh, is probably going to be a little bit of a challenge for them. Uh, so at this moment, uh, they would be my pick for our first playoff game. Nice, nice. Now, Kevin, you don't get a pick the first round because you get a buy, mm-hmm. but. Um... Out of the teams that exist uh, or that you could have the potential to play in the second round, who are you picking for Rapids to? Well, I mean, I, personally, I, you know, I'm under that uh, belief that you you got to beat the best to be the best. So if I if I'm choosing, I'm picking a higher seed um, early on. And so I think, you know, like, hey, let's let's go again with uh, those higher seeds, um, just because I think like that, that really does prepare you for a battle. You're hopeful as you continue on in the tournament uh, to face on the other side. You know, I the 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 battle for first place was all season with with Charlotte, um, who on the other side is just just as dominant and has played incredibly well. Um, and so, you know, that that could be a potential final down the road for somebody. So 
you know, why not try uh, to prepare yourself early on? So, yeah, I'd love to see Jubal early on. I think that'd be a fun. Oh one. wow, wow! So, so you're going high high seed first. So yeah. Wow. So, so Kevin, play out a scenario where Rapids two make it uh, to the conference Western Conference final. Uh, who? What's the pathway? What do you What do you think it is? Like, if you were to predict, mm-hmm. um, given, I mean, you've got a lot of work here to do. Maybe I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. you've done this, Jubal. Have you Have you picked out a pathway yet? Maybe you can think about it. But Kev, do you Do you have a pathway? You're like. Rapids two will be playing so and so for the Western Conference final. I mean, probably most likely, you know, that Western Conference showdown will probably be Tacoma. I think uh, because I don't, I don't think um, they probably won't, they won't pick Tacoma like I want them to early on. But <laughs> um, I think, I think that will be the the Western Conference showdown uh, in the hopes that they would get to the final there. Um, other than that, I think that the other game that that first opportunity, it, it's hard to say because one thing I, I, I know is true. And especially in this league is there's times where anybody can beat anybody, you know, like I think Houston, we lost to Houston here at home. Now that was a, that was a different scenario. It was kind of a, a heavy squad rotated team where we had a lot of changes that game in particular, but that was, that's there, right. They, they beat us here at home. Uh, so there's not, you know, it doesn't really matter, you know, what your seating is when it gets to the playoffs. I think that's, this is like the business end of the, of the season, right? Yeah. You don't give out trophies for, you know, first place, uh, during the regular season. Like w- what you're really playing for is the end. Um, and so this is where you really show what you got. And so I think like a Houston, they, they slipped in, I think on decision day, but by us beating Minnesota, that kind of knocked Minnesota out and brought Houston in. So they're they're hungry, just like San Jose is. They're ready to go. So they're a dangerous team too. So I I, I don't know. I'm I'm scared to put a prediction out there outside of you know we are hosting all the way. So that is a benefit. You know you have to come to Colorado to play at altitude, um, and in October. The weather can be pretty unpredictable. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. there's been I lived here since 2009, and it can snow as early as that early September, uh, and I've also seen snow in May. So I, you <laughs> never know. Like it snows and it's cold, and it's high altitude. So those are challenges I think for any visiting team. So who knows? Jubal, who do you have? Do you do you see Rapids two as being the team to beat, or do you have another? Do you have another pathway that Defiance make it? Um, to the Western Conference Final, I do. I, I think I think the Rapids are a very formidable opponent. Um, you know, again, given home field advantage, that's going to be another difficult challenge. Um, but but I also wouldn't discount, you know, SKC and, and Austin. Uh, those two are also fierce competitors. Uh, I think I think Austin's going to wake up. Now I think they've been a little bit of a sleeping giant the last few weeks. Um, and I think they're going to get inspired and refreshed to make a, a push here in playoffs, even though they fell in the rankings. Um, and then SKC is is really always, you know, they're kind of a, a mystery where some games they can show up and be a real dominant force and, and other games they can kind of fall flat. Uh, so I, I think for them, they could go either way. But but if they're really clicking and working well, uh, again, they're a, they're a tough, tough team to play against. Um, so I could very easily see us possibly having to go through one of those two on our way to Colorado, or vice versa. Uh, so that yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough road. This Western Conference is is an animal, and and it's not easy. You know, as Kevin said, the the, the show isn't over. Uh, we you know we're we're just getting to that point. And um, in fact, Wade Weber just a few weeks ago. We were getting to this point. Said, you know, you're driving a car, and at this point, you just take the rearview mirror and throw it out the window, because there's no looking back. You can only look forward. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it would be interesting, I think, if Rapids two somehow are choosing Defiance or SKC to, because you're removing that home field advantage from them and giving it to someone else. I, I almost wonder if you let those teams tire out. Um, 
I'm just curious looking at this. So, so let me ask this, guys. Um, the Eastern Conference, Crown Legacy, that which is the Charlotte team, is is sitting in the driver's seat. Um, are you are you thinking that they're playing in the final? You know, between the two conferences, is Crown because I've I've heard some criticisms that maybe the Eastern side of the bracket isn't as strong in terms of teams. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys think Crown are plowing their way through the playoffs and and they're the ones that whoever wins the West is is playing? Yeah, I I think looking at the Eastern Conference, there's a lot of teams on the maybe the bottom side of the Eastern Conference that they took a lot of points off of. Um, and I I don't know. If that's again, it's not. You still have to play the games. You still have to go out and you still have to get it done. So, props to them for winning. I mean, they did a great job. But they also, you know, Columbus is a defending champion, and they're sitting there at, at the three seed. So. There, it's not an easy pathway forward for them as well, and I, I, I think that they're probably the favorite on the Eastern Conference side, but it's not going to be a cakewalk. I think it, it, they're going to have to play uh, somebody that's going to be pretty tough, at New England or Columbus probably, and both of those teams look pretty good. And I, I would, I, I don't know, I would be scared probably for, for that because also knowing, uh. You know, they're if they if they slip up at all, you know, then they're they're gonna they're gonna fall behind, and it's gonna be a tough a tough road back. And so, I, yeah. Either way, I'm excited. Come to Colorado, we'll we'll have some fun. Well, I I I want I'm looking ahead of the calendar because Jubal, of course, if you and your wife are coming out, I I think are we circling the weekend of October 13, 14, 15 that this is. Uh, potentially the date that uh, Tacoma comes. If all things go according to what I'm hearing, you guys, it looks like we might be having a little bit of a showdown. Yeah, I might be uh, staying at Brad's house rather than Kevin's, but we'll see. <laughs> We've got I mean, space. We've got we'll space. See. We'll see. I mean, there's there's plenty of space for you to sleep in the garage. You know, we, we, we'll clear out some. I'll roll one of the cars out. We've got some space for you. Are you going to bring your whole family? That's the question. I'd, I'd love to meet your whole family too. Or just you and your wife. Yeah, it would be nice. Uh, but I think, you know, just given the the nature of the travel and everything and, and what we Road could trip. do. Uh, Road trip. Yeah, just, uh, you know, it would probably just be me and her. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, fun times, fun times. I'm, I'm looking forward to this, guys. So, um, so – we don't really have a, a little trophy or thing like our, our, do we need to get something amongst uh, amongst our chaplain group to kind of have a little bragging rights or, or do you guys have any sort of like friendly little wager or proposition that's that's on the table that we need to, you know, clarify right here and now? We don't, uh, luckily. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think there's uh just just the bragging rights alone i think you know i think one of us is going to live on that for many years to come so i i don't know if we need to add more fuel to the fire that's already here i i um, think we do like i think <laughs> uh you know seeing jubal in a rapids 2 jersey or something oh, with boy. The social media posting or or kevin squeezing into a, mm. a tacoma defiance kit you know maybe uh maybe just adds a little bit here for you guys I, I, I think the stakes are already so high uh, that I'm not sure I want to add again to to the to the madness there. Here's the here's the thing that I I see. You know, we we live here in Colorado, and there's a another um, team. You know, the Colorado Buffaloes, who has a coach who is very uh, very open about his team, and he's very excited. And I think for the first couple of weeks of the season, he was very outright like, "Hey, we are the best team. We're going to go in and do these things." Uh, and then they ran to a, a Pacific Northwest team in Oregon who just uh, put them in their place. So you have to be careful when you're talking a lot of trash. Uh, you just kind of say, you know, you, you kind of live on uh, on what's happening. And then we maybe we have that discussion after the after the match. Uh, you know, maybe maybe Jewel has to buy dinner uh, depending on how it goes or vice versa. I, I'd be OK with that. <laughs> Jubal, how about for you? Yeah, it's it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Um, 
you know, for me, I, I, I kind of play the, the faith card, you know, and, and just say my, he's my brother in Christ and that trumps rivalry. Um, and so I just kind of sit at that space and uh, I'm comfortable there. So, you know, but that, that, that doesn't say that I might, you know, say a little something after the game if it goes my way. Uh, but, but yeah, I just I I just try to try to look at it from that way that you know faith faith is more than soccer. Which which guys it it is a challenge right like because it it doesn't matter what level you're playing, you know we aspire to excellence we aspire to greatness we see that in the the athletes and coaches that we serve um, they want to and and. You know, part part of this being a production results oriented kind of industry, um, you are measured based on what you've accomplished, how well you've done. And so a challenge for us as chaplains is sometimes to bring perspective that says there's more, there's more than the trophies, there's more than the standings. Um, may, maybe share a little bit of what, what that has to look like what that has looked like what it what do you think it looks like in terms of just as you chaplain your teams through the playoffs right both both teams being high seeds one and two there's there's a big uh potential for uh you know uh, a big gap of expectation if if a loss happens early or if a result doesn't go one's way um and and to be clear like this is these are one-off games there's no like home and away it's not it's not like that um other than you know getting a home field advantage uh how do you imagine coaching your uh, or or counseling or supporting your people uh through a potential early loss or or something else that might end in in some frustration or disappointment yeah, in fact, uh, we started having those conversations yesterday uh, with the team during pregame. Um, simply just, you know, wrapping a, uh, wrapping back around to all the things that have happened uh, this season. You know, uh, we started this same conversation today with what are the highlights? What are the things that we've done well? Um, and, and coming into the season, uh, we, we talked about that it's a mystery, uh, that it's unknown to us exactly how the season's going to unfold. We have our plans, we have our ideas, we have the things that we want to accomplish and our goals, uh, but it's, it's still a mystery. Uh, for them to sign and come to Tacoma, they don't know what that's going to be, mean for their career. It's a mystery. Uh, next day, the next match, whatever it might be, it's all a mystery. And how yet in all of that mystery that God has a plan. And within that plan, uh, we, we just talk through Ephesians 3 and, and Paul's prayer and what he says that he's empowering us, that, that God is, has created us, that he's empowering us for the work that's, that's put in front of us, that his love is unconditional, that it's not something to be earned, that regardless of the stat sheet, regardless of all the accomplishments, that in the midst of all of it, that God loves us and he is for us unconditionally. It's a free gift. And then outside of that, that he is, he can do greater things than we can ask or imagine that his plan is not yet complete, that he is still working in and through us and that there is still more to be had. And we just continue to trust and we walk by faith. Um, and so that was actually our conversation yesterday for pregame um, in, in helping just to kind of plant those seeds as we continue to walk ahead that we don't put trust in our results and all of our stuff. We just trust him for each and every day, each and every moment that we, that we take in small bits. And then that that's really hard to do though. Sometimes, right. Is to trust in the everyday to trust for the moment that the Lord, his plans that he's intending for our are good and for his glory that can that can be really hard to trust especially if you're young like as so many of these guys are kev what about you like what are some ways that you can imagine yeah just speaking into the lives of these you know the young guys that make up the athletes on the squad and and also the coaching staff and and others who are you know 
let's be honest for the for the rapids organization the the results of the first team have not gone well we were one of the first teams eliminated from the playoff race in mls so now rapids 2 kind of becomes potentially a silver lining um but that silver lining could could also feel like a lot of disappointment having the number one overall seed, the top seed in the West, all those things. Now, what do you do? What do you what do you say? How do you how do you come around um, in in the event that that there is a letdown? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I think you named it. There is the expectations are sky high. Uh, in a lot of ways, um, some because, yes, the first team um, has struggled. They've been eliminated from uh, the playoffs. There's not uh, a lot left in the season for them. And so I think a lot of people within uh, the Raptors organization are now looking at R2 and saying, hey, uh, this is this is where we're, our eyes are focused now and really putting a lot of uh, a lot of weight into what happens in the next few weeks. And so there's uh a, an amount of pressure that I think that maybe you could feel, but at the same time, one of the things that I have tried really hard over the last two seasons, not just this season, but going back to last season as well, is to say like there, what we are trying to accomplish on the field is important, but ultimately the things that we are most uh, focused on are the things that happen uh, off the field. Um, and to, to help the guys navigate, like, we're not going to play soccer forever. Uh, I know Jubal thinks that he can or will. Um, I I know I can't. My soccer career ended many years ago. <laughs> um, you know, father time is undefeated. So uh, that will happen. We will not play soccer forever and what happens post soccer. Um, but beyond that, too, just like Jubal had mentioned, there there's, there's a line that we have to kind of navigate as uh, – as people that are working within soccer, uh, professional soccer, you you want to strive to do your best. You want to win the games. You want to win the trophies. But also as a Christian, you're you're realizing that there is more at play in life than the wins and losses. And how do we navigate that well? What does that look like for us when we don't have success? Because we won't always win. And we won't always uh, come out on top. Uh, what do we do with that? Um, and I think when we realize our identity is not wrapped up in our performance necessarily. Uh, in fact, not at all. Uh, as a as a Christian athlete, you understand that your identity is in Christ, um, and that is where uh, you you have the the wins uh, truly uh, because of all the things that He's done for us. And so those are those are big ones. Um, I think so many of these young guys um, have had different levels of success, whether it's in academy tournaments or maybe they've had some first team minutes and things like that. Um, so they've, they've know they know what it feels like to win. Uh, but there's also a, a lot of them that have know what it means to lose. Um, and they've, they've walked that road before. And so for them, they don't want to, no one wants to go out and lose. Um, you want to win, but knowing that this is, this is a, this is going to be a hard, a hard couple of weeks uh, for us as chaplains because, you know, win or lose um, there is going to be conversations that are had, you know, and those are the things that I, I know I've started to mentally prepare myself for um, when those wins and losses come, because yes, I think, you know, on, we're all hopeful at the, you know, the night of October 22nd, we're all going to be happy um, celebratory kind of uh, mood. Uh, but we also know that it could not end up that way. And where, where do we go from there? Uh, do we just kind of put all of our stock in that, that night um, or, the, you know, this, these couple of weeks, or do we say, you know what, there's more here that we're about. Um, and as chaplains, particularly, you know, the work is done, not necessarily on those game days, but uh, outside of that and the time after losses or tough injuries or, uh, tragedies, you know, those are the times that we really step in um, and and walk in. So, I, yeah, I all I'd say, you know, I hope we win, and I want us to win, uh, but I also know that we may not, and that's okay as well. I mean, that's 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 one of those things. We're we're all excited about the process, guys. Sometimes I feel like I bang a drum or or beat a dead horse around this, but 
I want you guys to share a little bit of what this means, because for me, from my perspective, 22 years of doing this as a volunteer chaplain, talk about some of what this, this can mean for some of the, some of the athletes on your teams, because, you know, for some, it may be an end of the road, end of a career could be the last game that they play and they don't know it, or it could be the the launch pad jubal you, you've already had three of them that have been launched into first team football um so so the stakes seem to me and from my perspective they seem very high and i think sometimes we look at professional athletes and we have some ideas wrong or right about them and maybe give us a little insight for those that don't know mls next pro what does that look like for your for your people? Can you guys share a little bit about that? Yeah, um, you know, I, I I think it's it's one of the things that we we talk about a little bit, um, not necessarily this targeted, uh, but we do just we talk about life a lot and the different the different challenges, the ups and downs, right? All of that comes through sport as well. Uh, one of the other people that we focus on a lot is the story of Joseph. And Joseph was a guy that experienced a lot of ups and downs. And he had a lot of challenges. He was doing things that were right and doing things uh, that, that were pleasing to the Lord. And at times, his life drastically changed for the worst. And in each of those moments, we find his example that he stays true to his principles, his character, his value, his faith, his commitment to the Lord. And ultimately, we see what becomes not only for him, but for the future generations of Israel and what became based on his life, right? And what what flowered out of that. And so that's one of the things that I try to help these guys understand, too, is that for them in their time here, it may change, but as they stay true to the principles of who they are uh, as an individual, as they as they adapt themselves to the culture of the club, as they stay true to their faith and their commitment, that again that process is that process of life is continuing on, and this may be a launch pad not to the first team, but it may be to an, another team. Right. And whatever that next step is in their career, whatever that might be for them. And in the same way that they're part of now setting a precedent, right, that they are they're they're going before the academy players coming underneath or the next Tacoma players that come through. They're helping define and shape that culture and that history. Similar. We talked about Man United earlier. They're they're shaping that for the players that come in behind. And so there's so much more than just this match or just this season, uh, that there's a bigger plan and a bigger purpose for them as individuals and as a collective. I love how you use Joseph because, right, Joseph, we read the story of Joseph and we know the end. So we're like, wow, wow, right. Number two in Egypt, like brilliant. Like he's he's made it. But when Joseph lives it and he's sitting in a pit, you know, almost killed by his brothers, uh, then sold into slavery, he has he has no idea that number two in Egypt is is part of God's plan and destination for him. And I think sometimes the young guys that we're sitting with, whether they're first team or 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 second team, uh, they're in the pit. Uh, they're in prison. They feel they're they're at sometimes the lowest moments of their life, right? And they don't know, and we don't know, too. We don't know God's what God has intended for them, and it may be number two, maybe maybe number two in the country, maybe number two in the land. It, it might be a, a really higher thing, but staying faithful to God is the important thing that that we coach and teach. Kev, for you. Now you've been doing this just a little, a little shorter period of time time than Jubal maybe, but for you, you're in your what second season um, around the team uh, fully, and and 
what are some of the things you're seeing? What what are some of the ways that you see this being? I don't know. Do you see it as a critical juncture for some of these for some of these guys? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you know when you when you look at this league and there are we've we've talked a little bit about it. There's a, a movement from academy coming up, uh, first team coming down, and and movement in between both ways. It's such a transient, uh, or it can be a transient team where you've got guys that are in and out all the time. Uh, you've got perhaps players now, and I know I experienced this last year for the first time, uh, guys that don't get re-signed. They have to find new teams. Uh, there's other guys that get picked up and moved to other places. We had actually a player that came from Tacoma that came to us this year. So there's a an element where guys can move within the league, uh, perhaps make their way into the first team, find themselves in another league, uh, maybe moving back to where they came from another country. Um, <clears throat> it's a, it's a lot of unsure things. That's the, the excitement that comes in the playoffs. And then immediately after uh, we flip into now, we don't know. And now we're talking player contracts and who's extended, who's not, who's moving where. Uh, and I know that has some anxiety for some guys. They, you know, they don't know. Um, and right now in the playoffs, they're, they're sometimes playing for contracts and they're really trying to show out so that they can say, Hey, I've performed well enough to stay uh, or to move up onto the first team. So that's a big one. But I think the, the thing that I have really been excited for this year is outside of the players, you know, some of the, the technical staff um, has remained a constant. And so I've, I've learned to, uh, really be with those guys. And a lot of them have young families and talking with them and saying, Hey, uh, how are you thinking about the, the off season this year? Uh, last year being the first year that they came into the league, the off season, that period of time was kind of unsure because it was new. Didn't really know how that would look this year. We know when the off season will begin. We know when it will start. Uh, are they able to get rest, spend time with their families? Cause these guys are traveling so often and, a lot of them have young families. How do how are we going to do that? So I I'm thinking more and looking toward the off season and how to to help those guys in that period of time when they're not playing, um, when they're not responsible for uh, the workload that they have. What does that look like? Um, what does their life look like then um, without soccer? You know, I think the the same thing could be said for uh, you know pastors or chaplains. You know, when there's not uh, matches and trainings and things like that to go to what what do we do you know like is our identity all wrapped up in that as well or is there work to be done and things that can be accomplished when we don't have games to go to and practices to be a part of and um things like that so i i i think also something to consider too is so many of these young guys again they're so young uh the the life experience is not there so you know when you are talking to someone that's been a you know, playing in a, in a league for 20 years, you know, someone that's been really in it for a long time, they know what to expect in those ups and downs. Some of these guys are possibly going to experience that for the first time. Um, and so, you know, the work that has to be done there to prepare somebody for that, I think is really important and vital. In fact, to understand, Hey, you had a great year. Um, but your contract wasn't picked up. That's okay. Like that doesn't define you. Um, there's, there's bigger things at play here. Great. Um, great to be with you guys on the podcast. And uh, with that, <clears throat> I'd, I'd like us to take just a minute. And uh, as the teams are about to play the playoffs, um, of course we're recording this. We don't know what the playoff schedule is going to look like. We don't know who Tacoma is going to pick, and it kind of makes some of this fun. But but as you're listening, maybe you're you're thinking, well, you know, it's turning out this way. Um, I just want you guys to take a minute and and pray for both of your teams, and then I'll wrap us up with a short prayer, and and we'll get we'll get going on for the day. But uh, yeah, let's lift up um, the athletes that that were around, the coaching, the staff, and again, just realizing that um, this is a results oriented business um, and, and trying to help people see beyond that and to know that God cares more about them as a person can be quite a challenge for us as chaplains, but what an important and worthy work. So um, 
Jubal, I'll let you begin uh, with the number two seed and then let Kevin go and then and then I'll wrap us. But uh, would you guys just pray uh, over over your teams right now as we get into this playoff stretch? I think they call it the mustard seed, Brad. <laughs> I love Father, it. Father, we, uh, we thank you for this time uh, to come together as chaplains uh, to, to talk about uh, the things that you're doing uh, within our teams, within this sport, uh, Lord, within these people. And we continue to lift up uh, the defiance to you uh, this season, Lord, as there have been many matches played, uh, lots of ups and downs. Lord, that they are emotionally, uh, physically, spiritually, uh, mentally uh, exhausted. They have put in so much work day in and day out to get to this point. Um, and, and the tension only continues to rise, that the, the fires only continue to increase. Um, and, and Lord, I, I pray for protection. Uh, that's similar to Shadrach and the boys, Lord, that went into the flame. Lord, that you were present with them in the midst of that fire and that trial. And I pray in the same way that you would protect them, uh, that as they emerge uh, out the other side and whatever that looks like, uh, that they would have experienced and seen you uh, and that they would be able to look back and reflect uh, and to, to see all that you did and all that you accomplished um, and, and to know that you were there. And I pray that you'd protect them and walk with them through uh, each and every moment, whatever that looks like in these next couple weeks, um, that you would just help them to emerge uh, safely. Um, and we know that you are in their hands. Yes, Father, thank you so much, one, for the privilege that it is to be a chaplain um, here in this league, and but to do this together, uh, to be able to Yes, rib each other a little bit and have some banter, but also the realization that we are all on the same team. We are united in Christ. And Lord, I do pray um, not just for R2, but for all the teams that are uh, going into the playoffs. Uh, God, I pray for their protection, that you keep them healthy, uh, free of injury. And really, we see this time and they see this time um, as a way and an opportunity to honor you um, in their play. Uh what it looks like to win and what it looks like to lose all of it, Lord is um, purposeful uh, and a reason that it's happening. And so God, we pray. Um, and I pray for our two as they, as they come into this season, riding a lot of highs, uh, God, that you continue to keep them focused um, as, to play as a team, uh, to understand what it means to, and understand what it means to win. Uh, but God also to do so in a way that honors you uh, to, to, be good teammates to each other, to other uh, other teams as they come in, and Lord, uh, to press on for the goal uh, that is set before them. Uh, God, I, I also just want to pray league-wide that you continue to bring more chaplains into the mix. Uh, Lord, we are praying that uh, every two-team in our league uh, is able to be served by someone, someone that's there to uh, care for, the athletes, uh, the technical staff, the uh, front office people, uh, because we know that there there may be some significant gaps within our league, and we pray that you bring more workers into the harvest field uh, so that next year uh, on this call, it's not just Jubal and I, but uh, there's other chaplains who are excited about their teams and the prospect of playoffs. And and when we, when we have these conversations, Lord, we know that there's also uh, people that are being cared for in other places. Um, God, we, we know that you can do it. Heavenly Father, I lift Kevin and Jubal to you and just pray a blessing on them as they come around and show support and care and love to, uh, to the teams, to the organizations, to the people that you've put uh, into their lives and for the places where they are intersecting this dynamic place of faith and football uh, give them the words for the one who's coming to the end of a career, for the one who's beginning a career, for the one who has uh, has no faith or no background to understand uh, where their identity uh, can be and where that ought to lie, and for those that need to be encouraged, for those that um, need to be celebrated. Lord, we we celebrate with those who celebrate. We we weep with those who weep, and I just pray your blessing on both of these men as they are seen often as as brother 
uh, as father uh, in, in many unique ways as they're seen at their respective clubs. Would you just bless the work that you've put into their hands and feet and just bless them in this season of playoffs. And we just pray these things, Jesus, in your mighty, mighty name. Amen. 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 All right, guys. Well, good to be with you coming to you from the touchline. And uh, I don't know, this, this is our last chance to go on record, but if it's Rapids two and Tacoma in the final, the Western conference final, do we have any score predictions? Come on. No awkward silence. You guys are both afraid to put it out there, aren't you? 3-2 I mean, Tacoma. 3-2 Tacoma. Uh, you know, I, I think it will be a high scoring game. I think both teams will press score uh, early and often. So I, I'll say a 4-2 uh, Rapids win. But uh, I know, I know that this is going to be uh, a tough one. It's going to be a hard, a hard fought match. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm glad that you will be here in Colorado. Um, we're we're going to have fun together. It's going to be great. October 14th, 15th. I am going to slate my calendar and make sure that uh, I can be there to watch some fireworks and maybe treat you guys to dinner. Although we're going to have to let the loser buy dinner, I think. But uh, <laughs> at least for the other guy. Uh, but guys, wonderful to have you on the podcast today. Blessings to you guys uh, here as we wrap up the season. And uh, yeah, we'll speak again soon. Take care. Ciao. Bye.